Okay, so today our uh, discussion will be focused on uh, biomechanics, which is a very important part of ergonomics. Last class we discussed anthropometrics, which is a part of ergonomics. Uh, biomechanics also plays a big role in ergonomics. So what is uh, biomechanics? Uh, if we take the word separately, bio, which, is, uh, which comes from biology or living, okay? And mechanics is a branch of physics that deals with forces and effects of these forces on the human body. So we have uh, biomechanics basically has two parts in one. The biology part, which is uh, the skeletal system, muscular system, nervous system, everything about the body in this way. And the mechanics deals with the physics of it, like the forces, static forces, dynamic forces, and how they, they act on the human body and the result of it. So in biomechanics, they view the human body is basically looked at and viewed as what? As a mechanical system. Analyzed, uh, looked at as a mechanical system uh, that obeys physical laws designed to perform what? A variety of functions in daily life. What, it, what does it mean, a variety of function? A variety of tasks. We already know that the human body is performing tasks. Anything you do is performing tasks. With what? With certain designed uh, products. So, uh, biomechanics is basically a science of movement of the human body. So it, it looks at the human body and how the human body moves in detail as a mechanical system so that they can analyze every part of it. So, uh, they look at how the muscles, the bones, the, the, the tendons that connect the muscles with the bones, Everything, how it works together to what produce movement. Because the human body is designed for movement. Anything you do, uh, you, you're not static like this. You're always in movement. So this science, biomechanics, studies the human body uh, in movement and in detail. Uh, to do that, they view it as a mechanical system and analyze it in detail. So. Uh, for someone who is a specialist in biomechanics, they can actually uh, estimate, which is actually calculate, uh, for example, uh, local mechanical stress. For example, on a certain part of the body, the stress that a certain movement can cause. For example, if I'm moving now my hand uh, like this, where is the stress on it? In which part uh, this movement can cause a problem or a stress on a particular muscle group or bone? Uh, what if I'm holding, for example, a weight? Now this is a weight. What happens now? What if I hold the weight like this? What if I hold it like this? What? So uh, they can calculate in detail where the stress is on the human body. And this is very important part, a uh, very important part because through this knowledge, better designs can be made. So for example, if you see that, oh, there is a problem, uh, with this particular design caused on the human body, we can modify sometimes the design to cause less stress on the human body, on this particular part, because the human body has a lot of parts. So they can calculate, for example, okay, what uh, just by standing, doing nothing, I'm also causing stress on, on the body. Just by standing like this. But where is the stress? Where is it located? Is it located on my neck, in the lower back? What if I'm sitting? Just sitting, you're also causing stress. But with movement, specific movements, when you carry <coughs> specific weights, uh, when you do specific tasks in daily life, uh, with every movement type, you create different stress on the body. And depending on what tasks you do, what, uh, what products you're dealing with. Are you carrying something heavy? Uh, for example, all of these things affect the human body and this science uh, looks at it in detail so that improvements in designs can be made. For example, here is a simple example. A person 
carry in what? 5 kilograms of weight. For example, a very simple. And <coughs> when that person carries it like this, so like this, for example, the force, the load on the body is, for example, this number. We, we don't care about the numbers, just see the difference, you know? But if the weight is carried, for example, like this, suddenly this increases. If the weight is carried like this, it's even more. The stress on the lower back, okay, increases. How this happens? Just by putting a weight close to the body, perpendicular to the body, the stress is less on the lower back. Once you carry it like this, the stress is much more. Even, even a small weight, not something heavy. If you carry it like this for a long time, suddenly, after a while, you will start feeling pain in the body, even if it's something not heavy. So, <coughs> this is a simple example, but uh, anything you do, any task with any product, it can create certain uh, problems, certain stress in particular parts of the body. And we need to understand this so that uh, uh, we, we know how to modify designs to lessen this stress, if possible. So the primary, primary goal of this uh, biomechanic science is three things. To enhance performance, performance meaning uh, how you do a certain task, so to, uh, to enhance the performance of this task, to become better the performance. Uh, the injury prevention is another part, how to prevent injuries from happening. This is very important in ergonomics. As we mentioned before, the safety is always number one, okay? So you don't want to use any design and to be injured by it. So this science, is one of the major goals is how to prevent injuries by studying the human body. And study and design for daily activities, daily tasks, you know, such as walking, sitting, lifting, uh, when you carry something, to prevent injuries to happen to the body. So uh, how to better design for these tasks to uh, minimize the injuries on the human body. So this is, these are the three major areas. So now, <coughs> when we say postural mm -hmm. and balance control, posture is the, the way you stand, for example, this is a certain posture. Some people, for example, walk like this. This is a different posture, okay? This is a posture. Well, how do you sit? For example, do you sit in a, in a good posture? Or do you sit like this, for example? So these are all postures, you know? Just as a, as a word, what does it mean? So many of our postural and balance control mechanisms of the body are essential. Essential meaning very important for even the most basic daily tasks what we perform. Even something very basic that we do every, uh, every day, uh, the posture is very important of the body. And usually it operates outside what our conscious awareness. So when, when you do certain tasks in your daily life, you don't think about it. You don't think, oh, okay, now I need to sit. Now I need to, to uh, hold my body in this way or that way. You don't think about it. You just do your tasks uh, and you don't think about anything. But you start thinking about it when, when, when something goes wrong. So when your body starts breaking down, meaning, oh, okay, uh, you get some uh, back pain, you start developing a disc, everybody has discs these days. Why? Because of wrong posture, wrong sitting, wrong standing, wrong walking. Uh, the products that are designed, which you use, sometimes they are causing you the issues, okay? So, uh, once the body starts breaking down, then you start thinking about it and understanding that you have limitations. When you are healthy, nothing is wrong with you, you might decide, oh, I want to go to the gym today, I will pick up this heavy weight of 200 uh, kilograms, no, nothing wrong with me, you know, uh, there is nothing wrong. But after a few years, you know, you will start having back problems, you will have started all kinds of other issues, and then you will start thinking, okay, my body has limitations here. So uh, 
we need to be very careful about this. So, how do injuries uh, happen in general to the human body? So, the, the risk of injury to happen is influenced by the following factors. The risk an injury to happen to you is influenced by this. By what is this? The type of task, for example, that you perform. The task, the type of task. Now, this can be, how often do you do, you do this task? The, how often? This is very important uh, thing. And for how long? Does, it, does the task have to be performed quickly or slowly? Like, for example, uh, if I have to pick up something heavy, okay, I have to pick up, this is not very heavy, but imagine if it's heavy. If I pick it up slowly, maybe no problem will happen. But if I have to do it quickly, 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 you know, like that, then some problem might happen to the body. Okay? Also, how often do I have to pick this up 100 times, up and down, up and down? It's different than if I have to do it only one time. So, the type of task and how often do you perform it, for how long, and quickly or slowly. This all can influence what kind of injury you can get. The individual's capacity, <coughs> meaning who is doing the task, like are you physically capable? Like for example, some people are strong physically, other people are weak physically. If, if a strong person, for example, let's say, do a certain task, maybe for them uh, no injury will happen because the body capacity is uh, suitable for this task. But if a very weak person performs the same task with the same uh, item, with the same product, they might have big problems. So not everybody has the same capacity. So, so is the person capable of carrying out the task safely or not? This, everybody is different. So, so this must be taken into consideration. The load, the load can also cause injury. What is the load? How heavy is something? Not only how heavy, what shape is it? The shape of the design. Sometimes a certain shape makes it more easy for me to use, to carry, to do a task with it. But if the shape changes, it becomes more challenging. So the body gets more stress applied to it. So the load, not only how heavy, but also what shape is the design. Also, does it have handles? Like it's very different if I want to carry something, to pick up something heavy without handles. It's very different than if, if it has handles. Because the hands may slip, I have to apply different type of pressure uh, on it, and my body, as a result, can suffer. So, uh, also, how hot or how cold or how wet is the item, okay? Does gloves need to be worn? All of these things uh, play a role. So, uh, it's not, all of these things play a role in the load. It's not about only heaviness. It's all of these things together that need to be considered. The environment. Where is the task being carried out or performed? Where, where, in what kind of environment is very important? Is it uh, inside, indoors, or outside? What is the temperature? Is it too cold, too hot, wet? Uh, all of these things influence of uh, influence basically how something can be used safely and whether injuries can happen or not. Uh, does the space restrict good posture? Sometimes you have to do certain tasks in a space where you are restricted. Like you cannot maintain good posture. You have to bend, for example, uh, against your will or do some, some movements that could stress certain parts of the body. So uh, sometimes this could influence also injuries. Uh, is the ground clear and flat? It's very different if I want to carry something. Let's say the ground is clear, uh, it's not wet, it's not slippery, it's flat. And it's very different when it goes uphill. I have to carry something uphill. It's much more difficult suddenly. Okay? So all of these factors can influence uh, 
what kind of injuries or uh, what, what type of injuries and how many injuries can happen to the human. Now, these are not like individually looked at. They have to be looked at as a whole, a combination. So you can, uh, for example, create a really bad scenario out of this or a, a, or a scenario that wouldn't cause that much injury. You can create the worst case scenario. For example, a task that is performed very quickly and often, the individual capacity, very weak physically, person, the load, heavy, uh, bad shape, no handles, the environment, going uphill, not flat, uh, all kind of other issues in the environment. You can create the worst possible scenario that can create terrible injuries, okay, to the human. Or it can be left. So all of this need to be viewed uh, not only individually but as a whole, so you can judge the situation as a whole. How dangerous or it is. <coughs> Repetitive strain injuries, these are the most common type of injuries that could happen uh, to people. Basically workers, people nowadays, uh, anyone basically. Uh, these injuries happen because of the constant use of and wear and tear on the same parts of the body. Now notice here, repetitive, meaning there is re repetition of some type, okay? So, when you use your body or parts of the body repetitively, this can cause over time repetitive injury. What is this? Like uh, something simple like uh, typing. Typing on a, on a computer. Now, what can happen uh, when you type on the computer? It's not a difficult task. First of all, the environment where you use a computer usually is indoors. It's a comfortable environment. Okay. Uh, the hand movement, uh, you, you normally sit on a chair comfortably using a computer. Now, when you, when you click on the keyboard, it's not difficult. You don't need to press hard, you know, to, uh, to, to strain yourself. But where is the problem with the repetition? So if you type, for example, for hours and hours and hours every day, a lot, I mean, then this repetitive movement could create repetitive strain injuries on your fingers. Over time, we are talking, years. Okay, of use. So it can create pain in your joints or in your wrists. If you keep using, you know, mouse, keyboard, mouse, keyboard, hours and hours every day, uh, it, it can cause something simple like that. And this doesn't need force, this doesn't need to be the body to be physically strained. It's, it, it, it looks like a very simple task, but it can create injuries. If you run, for example, if you run, uh, running is good, okay, for the health. But if you run a lot, what will happen? You keep putting strain on certain joints of the body. Maybe you don't feel it now, but after years you will feel it. So you keep running, 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 running. After years you will have pain in your knees. Now even if you don't run, if you just carry a heavy bag every day, for example, carrying heavy bag to school every day, just walking. This can also create uh, strain on particular parts of the body and injuries. So, these things are very important to uh, consider. Now, repetitive strain injuries are caused by the following major risk factors. There is major risk factors that can cause this type of strain strain injuries, repetitive strain injuries. So, one of these, two of these, or all together, the more are involved in a certain situation, the bigger the risk. So, awkward or static posture, what does it mean? An awkward posture means a wrong posture. It's like this one here. Okay, this is a good posture. And this is an awkward posture, a wrong posture, okay? So this is what the word means. Or static posture. Look, static means without movement. Now, even a simple posture like standing, 
I'm just standing here now, like this, okay? But I have to stand for two hours like this, not move. You will see that after a while, you will feel extremely painful and tired. Just by standing, doing nothing. Not carrying something, not doing some uh, difficult task. No, just standing, statically. Or sitting. You can just sit statically, without moving, for a period of time. You will not be able to sit for a long time in this uh, you, you will have, You'll start moving around, feeling not comfortable. That's, uh, so, a, a bad posture or a static posture, this is one of the risk factors that can create injury. Because once you start feeling pain all over the body, you're basically, that means, you put a lot of stress on that part of the body. And to put a lot of stress, as I said, does not mean you have to do a difficult, physically challenging task. It could be just sitting or standing or doing something very simple, but for prolonged period of time. Repetition, this already is clear. So if we keep repeating something over and over and over again, then this can cause this type of injuries as well. Excessive force. <coughs> Now this, if we have to apply excessive force, this creates additional strain on particular parts of the body, and of course, uh, this can uh, cause, uh, again, these injuries. Now, if we put excessive force and a lot of repetition, and with, a, for example, bad posture, this can increase it many fold, the risk. So, but if we have, let's say, a lot of force needs to be applied, but not a lot of repetition. Okay, just one, two times, for example. And a good posture. It will reduce the risk. So, what about vibration? Well, vibration is uh, one of the things that, that also can cause this type of injuries, like tools that vibrate. The vibration, um, if you use it for a short period of time, it will create no issue. But again, if you work with the vibrating tools uh, every day, every day, every day, uh, this vibration, like, you know, like on, on your hands, this will create problems on the joints after a while. And not only on the joints, uh, some people develop uh, neuropathy, which is not being able to feel anymore. So no feeling in the hands, for example, okay? This is uh, when using hand tools with a lot of vibration. Uh, over a period of time. So, wrong posture, a lot of repetitions, high force, vibration, all of these together, if we have them, we have very high risk. If you have one of them, but the others are okay, then the risk decreases. So we can have less risk or higher risk, depending on how many of these combine together, okay? Now, <coughs> these are some uh, very important principles in biomechanics to apply in design. That will reduce the likelihood of injuries happening. So, and increase the safety and comfort of users when using a certain design. These principles, we will go one by one and see what they are. So, whatever work is being done using uh, a design, uh, work must be done in a natural body posture, natural. So, you don't twist your body in ways which are not, not natural. If the design forces you to twist your body and change your natural posture, it will cause definitely injuries, okay? Then the design is bad and needs to be modified. Also, wrists have to stay natural. Again, whatever you use, hand tools, uh, certain products that you use by hand, sometimes you use things just by hand, sometimes your whole body is involved. So, if the design forces you to uh, twist your body or twist your arms or hands or any part of the body in unnatural ways, uh, you need to find solution as a designer how to decrease this from happening. Because injuries will happen in this case. Ex 
excessive force must be reduced. So applying suddenly force or pulling something or pushing, this is uh, excessive force. So must be reduced. Uh, like like uh, I already mentioned before, like if you want to pick up something, if it has handles, handles, it immediately uh, reduces the risk of injuries. If it's without handles, we have to put more force from the body to do it, to do the same task, and injuries are more likely to happen in this case. So how can certain designs be uh, modified to reduce the injury from happening to the human body? All of this is about this, about reducing injuries to happen. In other words, to make designs or design situations, environments more safer for the human beings. Everything, whatever your design is, or how it's going to be used, what tasks are going to be performed with it, it must be kept in easy reach. Easy reach, very important. So for example, this is here easy, this is difficult to reach because of the height. So the person has to pick up his arms and reach, for example, something. While this is here, more easy for the person to deal with, to reach, to because of the angle, it's suitable for the human body, the height is suitable. So uh, this is one example, but anything, anything that you design, always you have to keep in mind. Is it easy reachable? Even uh, some, something simple like, uh, like look at this mouse, for example. Does it have easy reach or not? In which way easy reach? Of course I'm reaching it. You will think, ah, it's, of course it's reachable. But no, it's about the, uh, the, the buttons here. So can you reach them with the fingers that it was designed for? If you place your hand here and I can click here and here, for example, and roll this easily with my fingers, what if they put it somewhere else? What if they put this here, the, this button, instead of rolling here, they put it here? What will happen? I will not be easy, it will not be easily reachable. I have to twist my hand, or for example, to reach this, I have to go here or here. So, uh, it's not about only, uh, it's not about the whole body. Can you reach something or not? No, it's about even small things. If you have a small device, are the controls reachable comfortably? Like if you have a mobile, you can just take the mobile in one hand, you can click with this finger on, off easily, okay? You can start even uh, writing a message with one finger. You don't even need this hand at all, the other one. So everything is designed, placed for easy reach, depending on what is it that you're designing. Sometimes you design big stuff, sometimes you design small stuff uh, for hand use. So all of these things need to be taken into consideration. But whatever it is, uh, this needs to be uh, considered. And always force, the force that you apply, needs to be reduced as much as possible to prevent injuries. Oh, you are talking about it. Okay. Now, the working heights must be proper for the body. This is uh, something uh, important to always remember. Like, most work at elbow height, meaning, uh, usually most of the work should be done at elbow height. Whether I'm standing, if I'm standing and working, uh, the table must be at my elbow height. If I'm sitting, the same thing, the table must be at my elbow height. This is the, the comfortable range for most work. But there is exceptions when you have to do heavy work, like something you need to really uh, use some tools and, uh, and uh, press heavily on something, cut something, for example, then it is advisable the working height to be lower, lower. If it's high, you will have to put a lot more force from your body to perform the work. So lower working heights for heavy work. If you do precision work, like detailed work, you, you need the working height to be higher up towards your face. Higher and you do the precision work. Like if you draw something uh, and you need to be very accurate, that's why these tables you can for example, move them up. Even though they are uh, very bad designs and very old, you know, but still you can move them up and you can come close to the work and work precisely on something, okay? So, 
depending on what type of work you do, like what type of tasks, again, do you perform, the working heights change. And you should be careful about this. Excessive, unnecessary, dynamic motion must be reduced as much, much as possible. Excessive means a lot. Uh, a lot of what? Dynamic motion. Dynamic meaning moving too much, okay? Uh, excessively moving. Uh, when it's not necessary, we have to reduce it as much as possible in a design. So here, dynamic is where there is rhythmical contractions and relaxation of a muscle, which does result in movement. Always when you move something, there is a contraction, relaxation of a specific muscle group, okay? Um, of any task you do, any movement, this happens. You open a drawer, you close a drawer, whatever movement you do, walking, okay? Uh, for example, up the stairs, you have certain muscle groups that keep contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing, okay? Now, this can become tiring. Imagine going 100 stairs up. Two, three, five, ten stairs, no problem, but 100, you will start feeling pain in the legs. Uh, except if you're very fit, you know, then uh, no pain. But still, so, uh, however, there's something interesting here, okay, that I mentioned. Dynamic work can be less tiring than static work. So wh wh what does that mean? Now, even though moving too much can be very tiring, but it is better than not moving. It's like, uh, because every time I move, yes, I do get tired after a while, but every time I move, I'm changing the muscle groups. So now, for example, the pressure is on this leg. Now it's the pressure on the other leg. Now here. Now. So w when I'm putting pressure on one leg, the other one relaxes. So the, the pressure changes from one, one muscle group to the other. One relaxes, one is in strain. So this is important. But if you're static, that means you can't be just sitting. Sitting. Like if I, for example, now <coughs> explain this lecture while sitting, maybe I will feel, uh, you will think that I will feel less tired by the end of the lecture. But actually I will feel more, more tired. Because I have to sit like this for an hour and a half, for example, not move, not move at all, just talk like this. After a while, my back will start hurting badly because all the pressure is on here and without any movement, the pressure stays in one point. It stays in one point. There is no relaxation, okay? So if you're static, like standing also, but without moving, stand like this for two hours and you will see all the body will start hurting. So uh, because there is no change, the muscle always contracted and there is no relaxation point. So this is here important to understand. Now, this depends on the time period and posture. Now, if, if, I, if I'm static, for example, in a bad posture, this is even worse. Or if I'm moving, but in a bad posture, that will make it even worse. Also, uh, Static load must be mi minimized as well. So if you see that the design forces you to stay in one position for a long time, this also is not a good design. And if possible, it should be modified. So I already explained the static without the movement, you are forced to stay in one position, uh, which can be uh, also very uh, damaging uh, to the human body. Like. Look at this chair, for example, here. This has wheels. Now, these wheels help, actually. Uh, so this is a bad posture here, a bad way of sitting. But the chair, because you can move it forwards, backwards, you know, just keep changing the body position. It's not stable on the ground, and it's not forcing you to stay in one position for an extended period of time. This helps, actually. This helps for the body to move. Your chairs are on the ground, no possibility to move. So you are forced to stay in one position for a long period of time, which can be causing injuries. Picking up heavy stuff and, uh, for example, not moving for a long period of time, the longer the worse, 
for the body. Carrying heavy bags, this creates certain strain on certain body parts for a prolonged period of time, and this can cause injuries as well. So, uh, whether dynamic or static body motion, it depends on the extent of uh, what you are performing, the time period, uh, all of these things affect how damaging this can be. Pressure points have to be minimized as well. Uh, always, uh, in any design, uh, any point that creates a pressure point with the body, okay, anything, it needs to be modified to create less pressure points. Now again, it depends what you are designing. But if I sit now here, and the table is designed in a way that, look, there is free space between my legs and the table. But if my leg come here on the edge, and I have to force my leg in, obviously there's something wrong with the design of the table. But this table has been designed correctly, ergonomically. The size of the table I'm talking about, okay? So it doesn't create pressure points. With any design, you need to be careful about pressure points and to minimize those. So sharp edges, uh, the shape of the design, depending where it comes in contact with the body, what material you use. Sometimes the material you choose can dampen the pressure points. A softer material, more comfortable, okay? So all of these things play a role, the shape, the material, uh, the measurement of a design. Enough clearance must be provided. Clearance is the surrounding space around the design. It's like, do we have enough clearance in this classroom, clearance around the tables? So when you want to go in here or here, does it have enough clearance for your body to move without your hips hitting the corners of the tables? Well, some of you, if you are very thin, you can move uh, easily, but if you're a little bit more uh, fat, for example, uh, you might start getting hit from here and from there, so there is not enough clearance here with this number of tables. If we reduce the number of tables, there will be plenty of space. So this is clearance around, the, the space around, so uh, to prevent injuries from uh, happening. This table also, it has what enough clearance, again, if I sit here, there is enough clearance for my legs. I can even put one leg on top of the other. Still, there is clearance. So, uh, in this way, it is comfortable. Possibility to move and stretch must be provided. As we said before, uh, forcing the person to, to stay in one position without moving can cause uh, a lot of uh, dis discomfort and injuries. So, you need to provide possibility for the person to stretch, for example, to move. The design must give you this ability, this possibility. So that the body can relax. Certain muscle groups will relax, others then take over the strength. Okay? A comfortable environment must be maintained always. The environment we talk about. So. Uh, <coughs> for example, uh, certain environments create a lot of noise, then in this case, uh, if someone sits in a certain room, watches TV, loud, okay, and everybody in all the other rooms, even the neighbors hear them, this means there is something wrong uh, with the building structure. Like, for example, if better isolating materials are used in the walls, this can minimize the, uh, the noise getting out of the room, okay? Like for example, uh, here the buildings are perfect. If, if you compare them with the, uh, some buildings in the US, most of them actually, uh, there, the isolation is so bad that, that if the neighbors whisper, just talk to each other, whisper without shouting, I can hear them. I can hear these neighbors, I can hear this neighbor, the upstairs, the downstairs, so good I can hear them that I know their schedule. Each day, what they do, what they cook, what they, when they go to sleep, when they wake up, when, 
I know all the neighbors' kids will just by listening because uh, the, there is no isolation at all. Here, the, the buildings are perfect compared in comparison. Uh, so, this is one example of the noise, okay? Uh, this is when we talk about uh, interiors, buildings, but we also can have uh, devices, like devices. If a device creates a lot of vibration, okay? Also, materials can be used inside the device that can dampen the vibration. So, okay, we have vibration, there is nothing to do about it. What materials can we use to reduce this vibration? To what? What's the, what's the point? To reduce the injury on the human who will use this device. So, it depends what you're designing. Are you designing an interior or a handheld product or everything? You need to take it into consideration that the environment that you create must be comfortable, okay? And as a result, uh, safer. Now, your next assignment. <coughs> Use <coughs> the design principles that we talked about. Which design principles? Those here. Just so nobody asks me which design principles, okay? So I will show you, huh? These design principles here, yeah, okay? These. Okay? Now. Okay. So, use the design principles that I showed you. For each of the principles, Find an everyday situation, example, in which it has been applied, what it, the principle, okay, has been applied, and an example where it has not been applied perfectly, and can, as a result, uh, cause injury or reduce the comfortability. Pay attention to every word. <laughs> so, for every principle, you will find a design situation from every day where the principle has been applied and another situation where it has not been applied. Now, I'm, I'm talking here situation, a design situation. It can be a product, it can be, a, let's say, an interior, an environment. A, so, what kind of situation? That's up to you. But a situation that has been designed and that applies this principle or doesn't apply. So, one situation for, yes, it has been applied and he will explain why and how. And another situation where it has not been applied and again you will explain why and how. For every principle, you will have two situations. Now, be careful. When I say has been applied, when it has not been applied perfectly. Now, it doesn't mean that it's totally a bad design. No, it can be okay, but it's not applied perfectly. In this case, you will explain why it's not perfect. So, it doesn't have to be a total disaster uh, example, because maybe you will not find. But a situation that is not perfectly applying the principle. Uh, and it can cause injury or reduce comfortability. Notice this. So, again, the design situation does not to be a type, does not have to be always a type that directly will cause you an injury to the body. No, but maybe it causes you not to be comfortable. Not being comfortable goes against the government's principles. Comfortability, safety, this is important. So, if in a certain design situation, like if I use this mouse, for example, and I'm not comfortable using it, this already means it's against one of these principles that we talked about. So I need to ask myself, why is it not comfortable? How is it not comfortable? For example, or uh, a total disaster. And I need to explain. 
explain. Explain in writing your observation. If you have a lot to say, please summarize with bullet points. I don't want long texts without full stop, without, uh, you know, always summarize with bullet points clear. Uh, so, clarify your ideas as short as possible. Take photos to clarify your explanations. Uh, sometimes you need, you need to take photos, uh, many photos actually, sometimes detailed photos, sometimes general photos, to explain, to show your explanations uh, so that I can understand what you're talking about, okay? Again, using photos from the internet is prohibited. You need to have uh, the product or the design situation in front of you so you can touch it, you can examine it, you can observe, you can take many photos. Anyone using photos from the internet assignment, I will not even read it. Another thing to be careful about, I warned uh, the other groups, but this group, I need to warn you also. If I see anybody using the same examples, be very careful, because I will trace exactly what you wrote. Anyone copying even one sentence from each other, I will fail you totally, the, the, not only the assignment, the midterm entirely, 30% will go, because these assignments are your midterm exam. So, work alone. You can, of course, give to each other advice, help each other, okay. But never show your friend what you write. And then, oh, okay, your friend will start copying your information. Because your friend and you will fail. Your friend and you will fail, too. Okay? Uh, so, if I see anybody using the same example, the same product, the same design, I will start looking exactly what you wrote. If the information is the same or similar, I will tell you, understand this, okay? Cheating means failing midterm exam. This is the midterm, okay? All of these assignments. Is that clear? Yes. Because later, when it happens, I always warn the students, and then it happens, and then I fail the student, and then the student starts crying, complaining, and I say, sorry, you failed, okay? So, not to happen this kind of disaster, I'm telling you from now, work alone, alone, totally alone. Okay, this is it, thank you.